All right, so, you know, every time I look at the knee, um, I just, I look at this thing and I just think like, this can't possibly work. Like, we're gonna, it's sort of like we took two broomsticks and we try to stand them one on top of the other. And we're just trying to stand the thigh bone on top of the shin bone and then expect that to hold up the weight of the body. Um, but it does, and, um, and it, this, this structure is able to support the entire weight of your body um, really thousands of times every day because every time you take a step, every time, you know, when you're walking, you're putting all your weight on one leg and then all your weight on the other leg. So, um, so it's able to support the entire weight of the body, but it's kind of looks sort of like, like how could it possibly do that? Um, you know, you remember when we looked at the ankle joint, those of you who were here last week, um, we looked about, we looked at how the, um, the, the, um, the bottom of the tibia and the bottom of the fibula wrap over the top of the foot so that there's um, a really good fit in between these bones. But when you look at the knee, you don't really see that. Um, the bones don't really fit together very well. Um, the bottom of the femur, the thigh bone, has a kind of a round surface. There's actually two round surfaces. So there's one on the outside of the knee and one on the inside. And then the top of the tibia or the shin bone is more or less flat. So it's not really like a good matchup um, in terms of the shapes of the bones. Um, sort of like, it's like kind of two tires sort of sitting on the road. There's three bones that make up your knee. And um, I'll just draw a little picture from the side. So the thigh bone is called the femur. So here's the bottom of the femur. And then you can see there's kind of a round surface at the bottom of the femur. And then the tibia is called the, sh uh, the shin bone is called the tibia. So femur and tibia. Oops, tibia. And then um, the other bone is the kneecap, which is called the patella. So the kneecap is a peculiar kind of a bone. It is a, what's called a sesamoid bone, which means that it develops within a tendon. So it develops within the tendon of the quadriceps muscle. So that quadriceps, oh, this one's not working. Fine. Let me find one that, better one here. Um, so the quadriceps is kind of the big muscle on the front of your thigh that you use to straighten your knee. And then the kneecap's kind of um, embedded within that tendon, within the tendon of the quadriceps. Um, so that means that the kneecap is basically kind of floating in there. Um, it's not uh, attached firmly uh, or to the other bones. So if we look here at the bottom of the femur, you could see that there's these two um, round surfaces, one on the inside, one on the outside. And then there's a groove in between those two surfaces. Hi, go ahead and get settled. Uh, there's a groove in between those two surfaces. And then the kneecap, pivot it around like that, the kneecap is kind of sitting in the, in the groove between the two wheels. Um, so that when we bend and straighten the knee, this one is attached here onto the, onto the bone, so it's not really sliding. But when we bend and straighten the knee, the kneecap kind of slides in that groove in between the inner and the outer surface of the bottom of the, the uh, femur. These are called the condyles, by the way. So I try not to throw in a lot of, um, a lot of uh, anatomical terminology, but it might be useful to, to know that. So these are the condyles at the bottom of the femur. There's a groove between the condyles, and then the, the kneecap's kind of um, sliding in that groove as we bend and straighten the knee. The function of the kneecap is that it helps to move the, um, the line of pull of the quadriceps out a little bit away from the center of the joint. So it increases the leverage of the quadriceps, making it more powerful in straightening the knee. Um, one of the, kind of the peculiar things about the knee is that when the knee is straight, um, it's very stable. So when the, knee straight, uh, when the knee straightens, these bones lock together. And when the bones are locked together, the ligaments that hold them together are pulled tight. And that will prevent rotation. So you could see that if the knee is straight, if I wanted to externally or internally 
if I, if I wanted to turn the toes kind of in or out, that that movement has to happen from the hip. So I have to rotate the thigh bone at the hip socket to be able to do that. But when the knee is bent, the knee unlocks, and then the, the ligaments that tie these bones together become loose or slack, and then that allows for rotation. So when the knee is bent, we can get some rotation between the, the femur and the tibia. When the knee is straight, there's no rotation. So if you look at my leg, knee is straight, you can see that I have to rotate my thigh bone to turn my toes in and out. When my knee is bent, I could keep my thigh bone still and I can rotate the toes to point in and out. You can try that yourself. So you can see with your knee straight, you have to rotate from your hip. And then if you bend your knee, um, if you do have a knee injury, it's probably better to do this with your healthy knee. And then you could hold the thigh bone so that you're not allowing your thigh to turn. And then just feel that you can, you can rotate your tibia, your shin bone, on top or, or underneath your thigh bone. So there's a certain amount of rotation that's a normal part of the movement of the knee. But at the same time, if we get too much rotation, um, that's a lot of times where we wind up running into problems um, with the knee joint. So, um, and that kind of relates directly to that question that you, um, some of you were asking about lotus and um, why sometimes we run into knee problems with lotus. Um, so, uh, so the knee is designed to rotate um, and that's, it's a healthy part of movement. Um, but when we're coming into a position like lotus, basically we want that rotation to happen from the hip joint. And if we don't have the ability to rotate at the hip joint, and the knee winds up kind of over rotating as a result of that, then we can create some pinching at the, um, pinching at the knee. Um, so we'll come back to that um, in a little bit.